This video was brought to you by Stoltenberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We're now in front of the house and today we're going to try to do something fun. So, I you know uh, some cars like the Ionic 5 has a solar panel on the roof. And how much energy can you get on a typical day from the solar? Well, we're going to try to find out. We don't have an Ionic 5, we have a Mercedes EQS. And we have similar equipment, uh, but we will try to do our best to measure how much we can get from solar. So, uh, you see today it's partly cloudy, but it's still early in the morning. So, uh, it's supposed to clear up and I look at the weather forecast. It's supposed to be nice and clear sky throughout the day. Yeah, until then, then it's kind of late anyway. So, um, yes, hopefully this is a good day. So you see, this is kind of fair, right? So what the heck is this one? Well, it's an EcoFlow 160 watt panel, foldable. Uh, in the Ionic 5, uh, there is a 205 watt panel. Uh, they could be different in efficiency or something, but just to give you an idea of uh, what we can expect. So, of course, we will multiply by the factor that it's uh, 205 watt versus 160 watt. Uh, but also, uh, this placement here is not ideal for solar because eventually the sun will go behind the house here. So we're going to put the solar on the other side. But uh, just to show you that, you know, um, also for a car, uh, what you want to do or uh, for solar, you know that you're supposed to, to get the best power. You need to angle it towards the sun and ideally you need to track the sun. But on a car, you simply can't track the, the sun with the solar on the roof. <laughs> so actually for most of the time, the car will have a less uh, optimal angle uh, unless you park it on a slope and you keep moving the car on the slope during the day. No, no one's going to do that. So, and then also some people might have trees or some people park it under, I don't know, a canopy or in a garage. So we'll see then today how it goes. Okay, so here's the setup. We have uh, now the solar panel folded out like this and uh, we have the EcoFlow Delta Max. So this one has been discharged to 40%, exactly 40% in the app. So uh, uh, actually, I think based on earlier measurement, I think 100% here, or if we discharge 100%, we will get, or we're supposed to get uh, two kilowatt hour, but because of losses, we only get 1.7 kilowatt hour. So that's what we're going to do to try to measure the energy. But I will show the case here is that, okay, um, there is some sun, okay, there's still clouds. Uh, and also we have some trees here. So this is of course not optimal. We should have cut the trees or put this panel on an empty parking lot. But on the other hand, who does that, right? Who parks on an empty parking lot for a whole day just to harvest solar energy? <laughs> so, yes, you could criticize, criticize this method. Uh, this is probably not best case. Best case would be on a mountaintop with no shade, but I think more common case is that you will actually have some shade. And I will show that right now, we are actually not producing at all. So, yeah. Um, I wonder if there's a threshold for it, because they, we should be producing something, right? But or apparently not. As long as we are in the shade, then no energy or no power comes from the solar panel. It's a little bit past 10 now, and I saw 20 watt briefly on the app, but uh, now it's back to zero. So still, I mean, we have sun on the panel, but there's a little bit of shade. You can see the sun is over there, again, blocked by some of the trees, but hopefully soon we'll get some production going on. So uh, I will not move the solar panel at all. I did move the EcoFlow a little bit because there was, the EcoFlow was casting a little bit of shade on that one. But still, not producing anything here. We're still at 40%. It's now 11 and we are finally producing. So first I had the solar panel here. I decided to move it even though my or original plan was to not move it. But uh, I realized that the problem over here is that we have lots of trees and uh, yeah. So how realistic is it to park in a place where you have shade? Well, you can always discuss that, but at least I will tr try to do my best within the, the area here to move the panel a little bit, but I will not angle it. So if you angle it, you will get better power because you see here that we receive only 86 watt, 85. So I've uh, shown before that if you angle it correctly, you will get 160 watt even in Norway, even by the end of August. But for now, 
only 86 watts, uh, but I can also show you better in the app. So this is what the app looks like. You get more detail in the app, like temperature in the EcoFlow battery and also uh, more decimals. So we are charging it slowly now. <laughs> so now the experiment, experiment begins. It's now a little bit past one in the afternoon. And uh, you know, I use SunCalc, which is a website and an app to figure out on this exact location today, when is the sun at, the at its highest? And it was just a couple of minutes ago, it was its highest. And I can show you that because we are in Norway, uh, well, I can show in the shadow maybe, that even when the sun is at its highest, you see, it still casts a shadow. If this was in Thailand, <laughs> midday, like noon or something, there would be almost no shadow. But okay, so, I still have it here, we get full sun coverage. I will move it around eventually. We are at 50%. Uh, the music, even, okay, the EcoFlow is not heating up that much. 26 degrees Celsius, uh, 101 watt. Why, actually, this side gets exposed. But it's just the surface. Yeah, uh, actually, it, it, it's quite hot there. But it's just a surface. I could actually just maybe, maybe I can use this one to kind of cover, cover up this side, yes. So we uh, avoid uh, too much heat up. But okay, so uh, the question is, now it's one in the afternoon, a little bit past one. So for how many more hours do we have the sun? Because we only gained 10% so far. We will see. It's now 5.30 in the afternoon and uh, yes, we've been uh, moving around so earlier today, this morning or during the day, we were mainly around here. So I, I paid attention to it, but you see right now, uh, this area here that we were uh, solar farming is now completely shadowed by the neighbor's house. So yeah, okay, like I said, you know, my, my lawn here might not be the optimal one for, uh, for solar, but at least we moved around to maximize the gain. So now the shadow actually on the neighbor is starting to creep quite close to this one, but okay, I might move it a little bit further back there, but uh, because of this right now, you can see that um, because we are in the shade now and kind of poor angle, we only get 38 watt, even in the sun. So yes, I would wish to angle the solar. If I did that, I would probably get at least 50 watt, right? But no, no, no we're not gonna do that. But at least we move it around. 63% only, what? We only gained 23% so far. Okay, let's see how much more we get, how much we can squeeze out before it kind of ends. It's almost eight in the evening now, and okay, we still have sun. This is Nordic winter, which is wonderful. It's like Nordic summer. <laughs> but the problem is that the sun is at a very long, low angle now, so we, we can't produce anything, you see? Now in the shade, I mean, there, there's still light here. Apparently there's light, but not enough to produce anything. So maybe there's like a minimum threshold. So um, yes, um, so we started with um, uh, 40%, which means that we added 33%. Not too bad, I guess if we try this in July or if we try this further south uh, in Europe, it would be better. But okay, uh, that means that uh, based on two kilowatt hour we have in the battery here, uh, I actually count, you know, okay, there is some, I, I don't know the voltage here, by the way, that goes here, but it's probably low DC voltage, and then the battery is also low DC voltage, so it's DC-DC conversion, but at least I count uh, uh, 2 kilowatt into the battery, kilowatt hour into the battery, that means 660 watt hour that we managed to produce, but remember that this panel is only 160 watt, and the Ionic 5 panel that we are comparing against, for example, is 205 watts. So in the case of Ionic 5, we will get uh, 850 watt hour. And then Ionic or uh, Hyundai, they advertise that you can get five kilometers of range. Based on this, you could actually get roughly six and a half kilometers just today. And it could be even better some other days. Um, but uh, yeah, you also have to consider that uh, not every day is a sunny day. There might be some clouds, there might be rain, it might be winter and then we won't be producing much at all, or if you are just on the roof. Uh, I learned today that uh, even if you have slight 
or a little bit of shade or something, you would think that right now we will be producing. No, we're not producing anything. <laughs> maybe the, the Hyundai panels are more sensitive. I don't know, maybe they have a higher efficiency, but this will give kind of like the, the ballpark what you can expect from solar on a car. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, in this, this system here, or in, in this one or in the Ionic 5, my claim is that uh, the energy you get there is literally just a drop in the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but of course it could be nice just if you have to be stationary a lot and just the fact that you get free energy but I think it's not cost efficient I haven't digged into how much that solar panel costs and also the environmental uh, impact on it but uh, I think uh, my claim based on this is that it's not worth it it's not worth the mat material or the the CO2 emissions or whatever <laughs> or, or the in increased complexity of that car but uh, maybe you guys think different but okay um, if you get that the Scion or oh, it's not out yet but you know that car is covered with solar panels uh, in that car you might be getting several kilowatt hours because you just have to scale this up multiply by 10 or I don't know how much then we're talking but then the car kind of looks the same and you can't uh, wrap it or do anything <laughs> so yes I don't know about you guys think, huh? what do you think huh? is it pointless with solar or not one last thing i might comment on is that okay maybe just to top up the 12 battery then it kind of makes sense but then you probably don't need this powerful system you're gonna have a smaller system but it still adds complexity to the whole car that's uh, a fact so anyway i think that's gonna be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later